Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name uh, is Louis Mendez, and this is an emergency broadcast uh, this evening. Uh, the Charlton Athletic Manager, Dean Holden, uh, has been sacked. Um, so we have jumped onto YouTube immediately this evening uh, to speak about that. Uh, we want to have your comments. There's loads of you joining us uh, on the uh, the live stream this evening on uh, YouTube. So uh, let us know what you make of the decision to sack uh, the uh, addicts boss, uh, Dean Holden. And his uh, assistant, uh, Danny Sender, and goalkeeping coach, Glenn Schimmel, uh, have gone as well. The quote this evening from uh, Jim Rodwell, uh, the Charlton chairman, said, I would like to thank Dean and his staff for their hard work and dedication and sincerely wish them all the best in their future careers. Dean's work in steering the club clear of relegation last season should not be forgotten, nor his development of many younger players. Whilst a thorough recruitment process for Charlton's new manager is undertaken, the first team will be overseen on an interim basis by Jason Pierce, who will be assisted by Anthony Hayes. That's the breaking news coming out of the Valley this evening. Uh, joining me on this evening is Charlton Live as we react to that. Um, well, we've got quite the uh, quite the attendance here. <laughs> Lewis Cat, Ben Cloak, uh, Joe Puddyfoot and Mark Newbury all joining us uh, on Charlton Live. How are you doing, chaps? Hello, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, well, a, a little bit shocked, I'd say. So, Lewis, since you, you, you put your head up first, um, what's your initial reaction to the sack in Dean Holden? Um... Strange one, really. Um, I mean, I'm I feel it's a, a little bit surprising given that the stage of the season and where we are, you know, what four games in, it seems seems a little bit like we're jumping the gun. Um, obviously, it's not been good enough, um, the last couple of weeks, but the timing for me doesn't sit quite right with there being such a such a small window now until the till the end of the transfer window. Um, I just think it's like Thursday or Friday this week. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's the timing uh, because anyone that we get in is going to take a lot longer than those four days to bring them in. So what we do between now and the window closing has been our concern before this news um, and adding the the dismissal of Dean to that um, to that uphill struggle is, is obviously going to be even more hard work for the people at the club at a very difficult time. Mm. Um, ben, as uh, as has been uh, said in the statement from from Jim Rodwell, there obviously Dean came in December last year when when the club, uh, well, in, in a similar position to, to where we are now, obviously slightly further on in the campaign. Uh, we were in, in in a spot of bother. He came in, he he kept us up. You know, he had a, a points per game ratio that, if extrapolated over the course of a season, still wouldn't have been enough for. For playoffs, but he did do what was asked of him last season and kept us in the division. Um, started with a win against Leighton Orient, but the, obviously we've lost each of uh, our five games in all competitions since then, culminating in that defeat at Oxford yesterday. Um, I mean, we, we've basically had a discussion about it this morning. Do, do you think that this that the time was right for Dean to go? No, I personally don't think the time is right. Uh, as we just said, with the transfer window. Um, and obviously with, with players injured, it's, it's another manager that's been sold short, uh, in my opinion. But look, it, it seems like these guys knew the decision they were going to make before this, really. I mean, that huddle on the first game of the season, you look back at that now and you go, 
he was really trying so hard to get the fans on his side. I mean, the trips to the pub, et cetera, et cetera, was before this anyway. But maybe he knew that he was under pressure from the get-go, from straight away this season. Maybe he knew that all of this uh, background uh, owners and investors don't back him fully. So maybe he thought, right, if I get the fans on my side, maybe they'll they'll bring me through and have my back. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, we haven't started the season well. We spoke about it this morning. Um, but to, to be sacked this early on just seems like that they knew this was going to happen. They were waiting for an excuse to get rid of him. But I mean, he always spoke so highly, didn't he, about Jim Rodwell, about Andy Scott and those kind of people. And they brought him in, as you said, in the, just before the January transfer window. It, it just seems very sudden for this to happen. Um, but don't get me wrong, the results haven't been great, but it just seems something's gone wrong there. Um, but who knows? Sorry, I was chatting away on mute there. This is, this is very much a live broadcast. Um, th th there were hints last week that I did mention on on the show after the defeat against Port Vale, Joe, where I, I don't know if I, if I overly imagined this, but I picked up a change in language from Dean in, in the way he was speaking about transfer policy and almost a, a distancing of himself from, um, from, from Andy Scott and his side who were in charge of bringing in the transfers. You know, previously it was sort of, he was sort of talking as in, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to try and do this. And then last week after the Port Vale game, when again questions about the transfer business have come up, because that's been a big concern for a lot of fans so far this season, um, Dean, Dean quite quite clearly stated that's that's Andy Scott's team that's got to deal with that. Is, is there, now now in hindsight, ha have I picked up on something there? Good. I mean, because Dean, Dean must feel based on the squad, and, and we've, we spoke this morning about tactics and game management that he, he got wrong. But he must feel, based on the squad, that he's not exactly been given a great hand to work with at the start of this campaign. Yeah, I, I, I think it was a, a, a sort of a fairly key sort of change in in rhetoric from from Dean himself. Uh, but he was the, really starting to feel potentially some of the pressure coming through, even even with the squad that he's got, and and there are problems within it. I think when you are picking the team that he picked yesterday, you are potentially sending a message to the the boardroom that you don't think that you've got the right tools available. Um, and, and if you, if you're sending that message, then th there is some disharmony there. Uh, the, the challenge for me, I think is, 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 is all about the timing of it. Um, even if he wasn't a hundred percent on the page and they weren't all together, it just feels like they just had to muddle through for, another week and just like i said about dean uh, this morning 40 second minute is the wrong time to make a change um and this is the equivalent of that in the transfer window you know just before you get to a point where you can have a break and a bit of a review and work out what you're going to do over the long term we're, make, we're making a big a big decision but it, i felt yesterday when dean didn't come over with the players and with anthony to to clap the fans i felt there was a, a bit more of a a, a rupture there as well it's almost like he he had a bit of a feeling that the writing might be on the wall and and well less than 24 hours or just over 24 hours later then the writing is unfortunately on the wall for him now so yeah I think it was a good spot it's just a I, I like him I like him as a bloke got a lot of time for Dean but it's it's one of those where we now need to pick it up and try and look at where we're going to go from here very very quickly yeah I mean obviously we're we're eager to find out what people I think might be the next step. Anyone out there who you'd like, obviously, in this very early stages, um, who knows? Obviously, Darren Moore and Chris Wilder are getting thrown about, but are they realistic targets for us? We don't really know at this uh, early stage. Mark Newbury's joined the joined the stream. Um, evening, Mark. Uh, your views on the departure of Dean Holden this evening? I'm not surprised. I'm really not. Um, well, one, it's typical for Charlton. And two, I think... The way it's been recently, you could have played any of his um, post-match interviews uh, to, to any of the games, and it was just the same old, same old. And I said, I did feel that because people like him and they, we, we've been making um, ex excuses almost, saying, oh, yeah, he hasn't got the team. He hasn't got... In the end, he's, like Joe said this morning, you know, he was putting round pegs into square holes, and that's... No, you know, not acceptable for a manager to do that. You've got players, yeah, you don't have the players you've got, but surely the players 
you have. You get them playing in the right way. You know, tactically, it seems strange. Um, I, I wasn't surprised. I think after his, his body language and how he was, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, yeah, it leaves us very difficult with a week to go with getting rid of players, players coming in. I suppose there were players who were going to go might think, oh, I'll stay because, you know, the new manager might fancy me. And we could be stuck with the, you know, five or six players who we talk about week in, week out, who we'd like to see go. And so we're going to be stuck with them. And players who might have been coming here might go, yeah, I don't really fancy it. But it's it's difficult. But I'm not surprised to see him go at any time with Charlton. So, you know, I know I'd, I'd like to see come in. But again, I don't think it's very likely. So... I who, said who would earlier, that be, Mark? I said earlier in, in our group, I said I like Darren Moore because I just think it'd be funny if that, if we then went on an amazing run and went up and Sheffield Wednesday came mm. down the other way. But, but I mean, I, we have to remember, yeah, I mean, obviously you said it's not very likely. And I think the, well, I, I have absolutely no idea at this early stage, but the reason he didn't stay on at Sheffield Wednesday is because he wasn't given a pay rise equivalent to working in the championship. <laughs> and I, I can't see anyone getting that in SC7 at this, at this no, way. No, true, I'll, but I'll put it that way. Singing, but a job's a job. I mean, some, some, you know, in, sometimes you're in a profession where you go, you know, I'd rather be in work than be sitting there waiting for someone else to lose theirs. Because if he's waiting for another job now in the championship, because remember, he, he was a League One manager last year. That's mm. the thing. You know, he can paint himself as high as he likes. He was a League One manager. Yeah, we're not going to be offering him, you know, Midas is gold, but it's a job. And again, it could be a stepping stone. It's another club. He shows what he does. You know, or is he willing to sit on his backside for six months and hope a mid-table team in like um, championship like Cardiff come in for him? Uh, mm. You know, but like I say, it's who I it's who I would like. But you're right; it's not particularly likely. I think there's more unlikely names which have been popped up, and there's one yeah. name which has popped up who we don't want. So. Uh, well, I'll, well, we'll go through the comments in a little while and try and guess which one you're referring to there, Mark, in your lovely vibrant shirt. Nath, uh, good to see you as well. Thank you for hopping on uh, to the pod. Um, were, w- would you have made this decision if you no. were whoever had to make this decision? No. No. All I want to know is who wanted him gone, I want a name. All these people who wanted him out, I want a name. That's what I want, a proper name. Don't go down the old Chris Powell will come back and say, it's not happening. It's not happening. So now we just got rid of a geezer. With five days left of a window, we're going to get someone in. What's he going to do? He's got all of blaming Holden's players that he's brought in. What are we going to do now? We're going to go round in a circle. We're going to be back here in January. That's what's going to happen. So, yeah, I want to know names. That's what I want to know. Just yeah, well, as in name, name, names, names of other... No, so, so tell me now, if you're asking for names of, of people to come in to the replace Dean, or you're asking for names of who made this yeah. decision? No, I just want names who's going to replace them. People wanted them out. That's fair. Everyone's entitled to that. So I want to know names who they reckon we're going to attract... Now, to get someone in. That's what mm, I want. Well, everyone in the chat, you're more than welcome to send your names over. Um, a, 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 similar to this morning, but even, even more so, we've got quite a lot of comments coming in. So um, start start tweeting us or, or sending your comments in, letting us know the sort of names you'd like. As I've seen, I've seen, um, I've seen Darren Moore's name uh, coming up a, a couple of times. I've seen Chris Wilder's name coming up a couple of times. James Parker saying Lee Boyer. Uh, is the only option. Jamie Putland saying, I'll take Scott Parker. Lewis, uh, uh, what what sort of manager? So, I mean, obviously, at this very early stage, we, we can throw names out there. I mean, Massey would like to see Alex Ferguson coming out of retirement. Um, <laughs> what's Without necessarily having to name a name, because it's tough at this early stage, what sort of manager do we need? What relationship do they need to have with this weird, massive consortium we have, where there's a lot of chefs trying to make decisions? What 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 will be the right decision for Charlton now that, that Dean Holden has been sacked? Well, the, the manager we need, if they're going to work under this sort of environment, is a bloody miracle worker because there's there's no there's no Nave's hit the nail on the head. Like we're, we're talking about all these managers that are out of work, right? Yes, Darren Moore hasn't got a job, but why would he come and work under this? You've you've given a manager who is your hire, your bloke that you've brought in at the at the back end of last year. You finally got your takeover the, over the line. And you've given the man five games in the league to do something. I mean, there's, there's time left in the window. I, I don't understand it. And I think that we're, we're absolutely pissing in the wind if we think that we're going to get anybody of any relevance 
because who's going to want to come and work under it? They're going to look at it and say, oh, Dean Holden, that looked like a match made in heaven over there at Charlton. He had the fans on side and everything. It was feeling really positive. Oh, they've let him go after five games. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen. I think the whole fairy tale reunions of Boya and Powell and stuff like that, that's not going to happen either. Like, it's whoever comes in has got a massive task because they've, they're inheriting someone else's players. They're not going to have the time to bring in the players that they want to play to implement the systems they want to play. So we'll be limping through to January until they can make some signings. If we make any signings then, that's another season we've written off and it's rinse and repeat. Ultimately, I don't know what sort of manager we're going to attract at the moment. Like it, it, It's pretty desperate. It's pretty desperate. And I can't, I can't think of a name that will realistically want the job. Of course, there are managers out there out of work that if they were to come in, I'd be happy. But my confidence personally of bringing those people in is is incredibly low. So I think we need to be realistic of our expectations. I think we've made a massive mistake. Well, what does this decision say to you about the new ownership, Ben? Um, we, we're still getting to know Charlie and, and his boys. Obviously, that we, we had some experience of, of, of what they did up at Sunderland. And, um, you know, as we said at the start of the season, we can't discount what Sunderland fans were telling us because that would be naive. It would be like when, when I don't know, Matt Southall was getting, being linked with Birmingham fans, with, uh, with Birmingham, and their fans were discounting what our fans were saying. I imagine the Sunderland fans were finding that a bit frustrating. <laughs> but, I mean, what does this tell you about the new ownership? Does it tell you, you know, they're, they're, they're indecisive because they, they, they bought this geezer in just a few months ago, effectively? Or does it tell you they are decisive? They see something that's not working. They, they've, they've looked to make a change. Which way do you fall on that? I think it's too early to say. I mean, if we wake up tomorrow morning and the manager's in charge and then over the next few days we see some signings, then you go, okay, they've acted quickly and maybe they had this plan in mind. But if this rumbles on for a few more days and we still don't see a manager and people are signing players and we've still got these players that aren't good enough for our club, then, wow, we are really, really in a bad position. So we might, look, it's way too early to say that as a, they might have tapped up someone else, been chatting to someone. As Joe saw yesterday from Holden's reaction at the end, he seemed like he knew that he was about to, his days were numbered. <laughs> Everyone else probably thought, no, it was way too soon. But yeah, un unless they've acted quick and someone's ready to come in tomorrow, then you go, okay, at least you've got a plan in mind. Um, but still... <laughs> Again, as we've all been saying, this was their guy. This was their man. And how has it gone wrong so quickly? Um, I mean, have they fallen out over transfers or or something? I don't know. But it is bonkers. It's gone wrong so quickly. Um, so, yeah, oh, we'll have to wait and see. But tomorrow, there's got to be something, surely. If, if there's not a managerial appointment by tomorrow, then we're really in trouble because Thursday will come around very quickly. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, again, I don't know, but I'll be surprised if it, if it's that quickly. But you know, maybe it is some a lot time. A lot of time there is managers lined up. I, I'm not panicking if it don't happen tomorrow. I mean, we've got an interim manager in place in in Jason Pierce, Joe. Um, I mean, it's obviously it's notable that when um, Garner left and he was replaced by Dean Holden in that interim period, it was Anthony Hayes who was the manager and Jason Pierce was his assistant. Now those two have swapped roles for this one. Are you reading into that and? Uh, well, it's nice to see Piercy about for a bit because I quite like Jason Pierce, so uh, especially as a player. So it'd be interesting to see how he gets on um, in the next uh, the next few days if he does make it to Saturday's home game with Fleetwood. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not sure that you would announce an interim manager if you're then going to appoint one the next day because um, there is no game. So that it feels like he's going to be there probably for Saturday um, at, at the very least. Uh, look, I'll be excited to see what Piercy can do. He's he's got a very good reputation, uh, but I've never been particularly fond of our policy of of always promoting from within. I, I just don't believe that you always have the answer within the stable of people that you have at the club. Um, and he's coming into a really tricky situation because the the club is still going to have to be signing players. He's not going to be a part of that, is he? So um, he's just going to probably be given a, a number of players potentially this week um, or a couple of players potentially this week, he's then got to fit into his plans. It's an unenviable task. Um, the fact that he's got the job over Hayes, unless Hayes said, no, the, the pressure of doing it last year on an interim basis was just too much. And, and I don't want that pressure again. For me, I'm reading that as 
um, as Hayes will also be going and it's a complete clear out and they're, they're lining up somebody to come in and bring in an entire team with them, uh, which I have said previously, uh, you know, I would like to see an entire coaching setup come in and who know each other, who who know their weaknesses, their strengths and, and can really just hit the ground running. I would have liked to have seen that before now, but we're not going to, that the, the time is just horrendous. Um, but you can't get away from that. And uh, I feel sorry for, I do feel sorry for Jason because I think he's just got an absolutely impossible task on his hands, but hopefully he does well. It's just one of those things. It's another side story in Charlton, isn't it? You're going into a massive season, the weakest league for however long, you're hoping for promotion. And then all of a sudden, the, the next thing to watch is how does a player that we've watched for years who loves the club through and through, how does he keep the uh, the ship afloat when it feels like there's holes being shot into the side of it from all angles? Mm. Um, just to clarify, um, James put in, in the chat, Pierce was in the coaching setup, so why is he going to shore up the defence? He was actually with the academy uh, rather than involved with the first team, uh, other than those, those few games where obviously he was um, uh, during that interim period between Ghana and Holden. Um, a couple of things, I mean, we're going to start to try and get to some of the uh, the, the comments in the chat. Um, Chris Reader, Mark, is saying, got a feel for, for Danny Sender, only just being promoted to the first team. Uh, obviously, Danny's gone and Shims has gone as well, the goalkeeper coach. Um, it, it's a clear out. We'll, we'll, we'll call it that. Are, are they hard done by? You know, especially the ones, like you say, Danny Sender, who's, who's only just come up from the, the academy, where we're, we're told he was a very good coach, and now he's out, out of a job. Yeah, it's it's hard. But obviously, if they're looking to bring in a manager, most managers now travel as a package with a with a you know goalkeeper coach or a first team coach as well. So you know down the line you'd be getting rid of them anyway. So whether they've made it thinking you know, a clean break for the whole crew would be a better thing. Yeah, it's unfortunate because like I say you know it was not that long ago he's being welcomed into the coaching setup, and then he's now looking you know at the unemployment line. Um, but to be honest, it's it's. It's typical football almost. Nowadays, I think if a manager stays at a club for like three seasons or more, they're considered to be a very long-lived manager, um, especially in the lower divisions. I mean, I know there's you know, the odd exception up in a premiership, but you know, apart from Watford, who are going to be a bit jealous that we've managed to sack a manager before them, it seems to be that you get roughly... You know, almost. I, th- I should imagine if someone looked at the stats, you'd be about two seasons before you moved on or moved out. So those days have gone. So I, d- I don't think any coach now would be expecting to stay at a club, you know, five, ten, like like we used to have with Curbs, with Lenny Lawrence. You know, so whether mentally they're more attuned to that. I mean, like it's not nice getting the sack. However, maybe now. V- the climate has changed in football, so you're you're slightly more aware of it. So, well, I mean, uh, starting and ending a season as Charlton manager is is very rare these days as well. So it must have been Bo was the last one who actually started and ended a season for for Charlton. So crazy run, right? Nate. No, I mean, clearly you're the most upset from from this decision. You've um, you, you don't think you don't seem to think it's the right one. So I'll ask you the same question. I asked Ben, you know, what does this say to you about the new ownership? Because I don't, I, you know, I don't really know what your feelings have been on on how it's gone so far. But you clearly think this is the wrong decision. So, are you apportioning blame at the ownership? Is is that part of it? Do you think they've made a, a wrong choice here? Is that is that the way you're seeing it? Because you don't look very happy. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I lost it a little bit earlier because I was just a bit fuming. But to be, you know, yeah, we've been rubbish. I'm not going to come on here and say, oh yeah, I think we've been brilliant this year because we've been absolutely pony but the thing is it's five games and if I look at it in perspective and look who's been missing if we had our, our strongest team our strongest 11 week in week out and we were still getting tonked then I, I, I get it I get it but for me five games in isn't long enough we we can go back right go back to Boya when he played with a diamond we had a squad evolving around a diamond we brought Nigel Atkins in to play with wingers that came in Jacko came in Played with a back three. Then we brought Garner in, a different style of play. Holden, a different style of play. So now you've got all this mishmash of players. And now you're going to get some Tom, Dick and Harry come in. Not Jason Pierce, by the way. Some random manager, Lee Johnson, whoever they're going to get in. And he's going to set them up in five days. What is he going to do? What is he going to do, really? 
And do you know what I'm sick of? Is all these years we've been chatting about the board, Roland, Sandgard, all of this nonsense. Well, how long have we had this positive vibe for? Four weeks, five weeks? And what are we doing now on a Sunday? Chatting about the board again. It's boring. Mm. It's so boring. So someone someone put in the chat earlier that I jinxed it on, on the opening show of the season by saying like we were only talking about football for a little while. And I generally thought we'd get a little bit of talking about football. You know, obviously, I think, as I stated earlier on in the pod, you know, I was nerv- I'm was i nervous about what's going to happen with the ownership because I know, you know, like I say, I speak, I speak to Sunderland fans. We don't really know how this consortium is going to work how far they're willing to go in terms of back in the club you know is is there really that room for funding that will get us into the championship minimum you know we saw that interview with charlie mevin um in in the telegraph during the week lewis where he's talking about cutting costs down to one to two million pounds losses per year which is not a way unfortunately probably sustainably to run a club in league one of our size you know that uh, if we lose one million pounds next year unless we sell dobbo for 10 million pounds if we've lost one million pounds only rather than nine or ten, it's probably because we've got relegated down to the National League or something stupid. Like, um, we, we wouldn't have much of a squad to talk of. So, yeah, concerns. Um, names are out there then. Shall we, shall we just go around? Lee Johnson is one that's been thrown out as fans guessing. Again, I'm, I'm not going to claim to have any form of inside information on this, but I mean, it, Lee Johnson has been named by fans. I've noticed uh, Nathan Jones. Would he want to come down to League One? I know he had history with us, but who, who, someone will because you know people do. I was surprised that Neil Harris went to Gillingham when he did, where they're in a bit of a state. But obviously, that's turned out all right for him with a takeover. Lewis, is there anyone in mind you think might be next? It's difficult to say, mate. To be honest with you, I mean, obviously there are, there are names out there that that would be preferable ones, and there are ones that aren't. You know, like Lee Johnson is not somebody I'd want in charge of my football club. Really, like he's not not really the fit that I think we would we would want to go for. Concerns there that he's he's worked with with Methan before, obviously at Sunderland. You, you don't know. I wouldn't read a huge amount into that. He got sacked yesterday, but um, you know, I, I don't I don't think there'd be a huge amount in that. I think it'd be a bit of, bit of a silly one. Um, and then you're looking at the people that are out of work. You know, the likes of a Darren Moore. I don't think you're going to get someone like a Nathan Jones by any chance. I don't think they're going to drop down to League One. Um, and then you, you're going for the the reunion people, Powell and Bowyer. Again, I don't I don't think that's something that's going to happen. So unless they're going to go big and try and price somebody from from a club that's performing, you know, well at our level, try and prize a manager, someone like a yeah, like Mark Bonner. I was just about to say Mark Bonner um, at Cambridge, somebody like that. I, I don't know, but ultimately it, you're coming into into a pretty negative um, setup at the moment. Um, so yeah, it'd be. I couldn't even. I couldn't pick a name that I think realistically would come in. I mean, if I was, if I was being like a dreamer and thinking about it, I think Darren Moore would be a great fit. Are we? Are we going to attract Darren Moore at the moment? I don't think so. So yeah, we're we're going to be fishing in a, in a very very small pond of of managers. I think to replace Dean. Mm. I'm going to try and get to a few comments now um, and, and forgive me because there are millions of them. So there's, there's every chance I'm going to miss something really interesting that someone said, but I'll, I'll pick up a few of them. Now, Connor, Connor uh, is an interesting one because obviously I uh, know Connor to, to say hello to on, on away days and stuff. And I thought he felt reasonably positive at the start of the season. He's now saying couldn't have said it any better than myself. Well said, Nathan, the club uh, is, is an absolute shambles. Um, Ben, reaction to what Connor just said there, and does tonight's decision to you suggest that we're we're in a mess still? Is that how you feel? I mean, because I mean, it's only this morning we we're talking about how Dean Holden side, you know, were, were naive tactically, you know, in that first half, and then didn't manage the game properly in that second half, and we're on the back of a five-game losing streak. You know, we're we're not in good form to put it that way. It's it's a short lack of form to sack a manager, but we've seen probably seen managers go for less. I just think any team that go, well, any club that goes for a whole preseason, then goes into this, we're not even reached the end of August, end of the transfer window, and then decides, well, actually, we don't actually think you're good enough for the job. It's just bizarre. Like, there seem, there must be an ulterior motive. It just seems crazy. Why would you have gone through that whole process of preseason, watched him take all of that, watched these games, and as Nave said, 
these injuries have been crazy. We've been unlucky in a couple of games with individual mistakes that he could do nothing about. And now you get rid of him. It's just absolute bizarre. So, yeah. But, but, just could, think... but, but when you look at the, the team making the same mistakes three games in a row, is that not a concern that he hasn't, you know, we've had this week on the training ground this week and, and we still made that mistake, yeah, you know, yeah. those tax queries. Is that not part of it as well? I'm just trying to give both sides of it because, uh, be honest, I'm no, I, no, I'm no. not really sure if I would have made the decision either way. To be honest, so it is one of them that, as I said, if if a new manager is appointed in the next couple of days, and then you go, oh, okay, I can see why it is, but it's this board have appointed this manager before, so they've watched him. They they could have sacked him in the summer, surely, if if they knew that well, as soon as they come in and gone, ah. Oh, now, nah, actually, we, we don't actually agree with you. But, of course, it's not gone gone well these first few games. As, as I agree with Naif. We can't turn around and go, oh, uh, oh I feel really gutted for Holden because we have played well in these first few games. But you've got to look at it from an outsider's point of view. People look and go, how have they backed him through the summer to then sack him straight away? It just it just seems bizarre. And, and these players that we signed at, in the defence, we all said as fans when the game, first game started, ah, we're all right in defence, we're okay. Like, So why are they playing so bad? Well, that maybe that is down to the training ground. Maybe they're down the training ground and seeing these things happening. But it just seems like such a ulterior motive to all of this. It seems like they knew something like this was going to happen and they've got someone lined up. That's all I can think of because... It just seemed, why would you back this guy all the way through now to do it now? As Mark said, we've done it flipping before. What for that? It's just crazy. But you asked Lewis, who are we going to appoint? I can't even think of that right now. It just seems surreal. Why And mm. why would anyone want to come to us now? Are we a big jump now for someone like Mark Bonner at Cambridge? Or he's just going to go, actually, I don't want to jump into that right now. They're, they're at the top end of the table, aren't they, Cambridge? They're flying. Uh, Martin Eistead saying maybe we should get Karen Hills in, but I don't think she'd make the step down at the moment either. Um, Adam saying, uh, sorry, uh, Aldrich uh, saying, regarding uh, the last few days of the window, who's going to want to come to a managerless team at the bottom of League One? It's no secret, Joe, that other than the first few weeks where we got Alfie May, who we like, who's bagging, bagging goals now, like I said, he would. Well, I didn't have to be a genius to predict that, to be fair. Um, you know, the likes of Pan Kamara, who we like, you know, we, we've signed good players at the start of the window, but it's no secret. It's been an absolute awful window since then. It's been too slow. It's cost, it's cost us points. You know, we'll see what happens between now and Friday when the deadline is, but it's going to take something to turn it back in, in into a good window. Do you, do you think the lack of a manager would, would change that? I guess if, if it has been, as we've been told, and as Dean hinted to, Andy Scott's team that's in charge of transfers, it might not make that big a difference. But who's going to come to a club not knowing who's going to be their manager and therefore what system you're going to play and, and how how the, the club will be run on the playing staff? I, I categorically said this morning uh, when, when I was asked the question um, about Dean that for, for certain he'd be in, in work for the rest of the week. Um, as an absolute minimum, because why would you make the change now? It would make the window so much harder. Ne never try and predict Cholton, Joe. We've worked. We, we should have learned that over the years. Never predict yeah. Cholton. I I do think that probably someone somewhere is going to blame me for having tempted fate on that one. Um, but the, it's it's going to be an uphill struggle. It, what this does scream is that um, the manager isn't a hundred percent central to the recruitment plans because they think they can do it without the manager. Either that or or they're having some pretty hefty disagreements in terms of the, the number or style of players that need to come in. Uh, it's uh, if, if you were, if you were, if you were choosing your new job and you couldn't meet who your manager is going to be, you would think twice about doing it, regardless of how much money you're being paid and all the other things, it would be, it would be a bit of a challenge. So um, I think it's going to really hamper us um, over the next few days. And that's why I say it's exactly the same as the 42nd minute substitution yesterday it's just not quite the right time. If you're going to make this decision, if you don't back him, get through the window and then reevaluate then or do it in the summer. And But if they did it in the summer, they would have, they would have caught Pelters because he was riding high at that point after last season. So I can see what I didn't do it then. But yeah, just far, it's just the complete wrong time. And, and I think at the end of the season, we'll look back and think, could we... Have we missed out because we haven't got the right players in at that time? I think it could be a, a pivotal moment for the for the owners that they're going to have to wear 
and the extra losses for them next season. Not, let's not forget if they don't get it right. Hmm. Uh, Brazilians who uh, who came on our stream this morning, actually, what feels like about a million years ago, said, I think, uh, if I'm honest, I think Lee Johnson is nailed on. He knows uh, Charlie Methman just been sacked, no compo involved, and they'll blow the experience uh, trumpet. But that's, uh, you know, obviously we, we don't really know. Aki uh, was saying, uh, I'm surprised Holden was sacked, given how tight-knit him at Rodwell, Scott and Mevin looked. But as, as we say, there's a lot There's a lot of uh, people involved in consortiums and, and, and who knows what's going on behind the scenes there at the uh, at the club. But again, I did pick up in that interview with Dean last week. And I think again, yesterday's one, I think I mentioned it this morning, like he, he distanced himself from, uh, from, from Andy Scott's recruitment process. Uh, right, I'll look at a couple of tweets as well. Um, Dino is saying, not not that one, D- Dean, Dino CAFC is saying, Dean Holden wasn't given enough time and backing to get things right. Our once great, well-run club goes from one crisis to another. We need some stability. How are we going to attract the players we desperately need next week uh, with uh, no manager? Kieran Hunt, uh, in, in a few more words than I'm going to say, uh, says no, no to Scott Parker. Um, George says, uh, do people asking for Darren Moore seriously think that we have the squad for his style of football? I can't think of anyone worse. Uh, with this uh, current bunch of uh, players. Uh, BDL saying that whoever comes in, they have a massive job to do. One thing we need is stability. I just can't see that happening. Eat, sleep, sack, uh, repeat. Um, Yeah, stability is something we haven't had, Mark. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you have to go all the way back to Bo to find someone who started and ended a a season uh, in charge of the Addicts. Uh, Cowley Brothers' names have just come up in the chat a few times, I've noticed. Um, Dan saying get Gary Nevlin. Uh, he's his mate, he's mates with one of the owners, isn't he? Actually, uh, Bonner, I think. Um, what's his name? Boyan, Mark Bowen, whatever his name is. I can't, I can't remember the name of half this consortium because about 50 million of them. Um, yeah, stability that that's not what we've had, Mark, for a long time. Whether you look at the managers, the ownership, uh, the back four, <laughs> like we, we never seem to have the same personnel in any role in the club for long, longer than about 10 minutes at the moment. And that that's a big part of it, you know, and it does come down to takeovers because what well, Mevin's, Mevin's boys coming in is what, that, is that the fifth takeover in 10 years? Something like that. Mark Bowden. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because obviously, you know, you five guys are way younger than me. So I started off with Lenny Lawrence and it was steady. And then obviously. Did you get him uh, back in? <laughs> He, he couldn't do a worse job. Uh, but then you had Curbs and had all that time with one manager and you felt secure. And then uh, whether it's when Curbs went and, you know, we all know why. And it, you know, it wasn't that the fans demanded he go. And it was, it seemed to be that was the start of it then. So we're going back quite a long way, which probably maybe probably before some of you guys even probably started following Charlton. Um, and then you sort of say no one really fitted no one really fitted we thought you know Chris Powell did and you know he he got screwed over royally so but he was probably the only one since Curbs who's come in and you're going right he's he's an absolute fit for us you know obviously with a merry-go-round under Roland with Peters and Luzon and Riga and you know, and it was just just crazy. So it, it does seem now for for most Charlton fans, this has become the normal, and that just that just feels wrong. <laughs> you know, because you say you, you know you follow the team, they're your team, and sometimes you say, well, whoever the manager is, it's still my team. And I've seen people saying, you know, if if Scott Parker turns up, I'll hand back my season tickets and stuff like that. I said, but you know, it's your it's your team. You might not like the manager, but it's the team you follow. And unless they were ex- extremely, I don't know how to, how to put it, a character who turns up, yeah, yeah he's going to galvanise the fans and have everyone hate him. If he gets results, then, you know, gets people on his side. That could be any manager who comes in. Um, seeing some of the names go past, Gary Rowe, it's not going to come down, down here. Um <laughs> I'd love Gary Rowe. I think, yeah, I think he's hard. Yeah, done but by it's just, I think so. It's 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 become the normal now for for Charlton to to do this, and whether now I'm because I'm old and withered, I've become almost like a bit desensitised towards it. Like I say, when when we sort of like the rumour was going around earlier, I just looked at it and I wasn't surprised. I didn't. I don't think you know if any of the guys here can say they looked at their screen and went, "Wow, that's a shock." 
I, I don't think any of us can. I think most people go, you know, the timing seems odd. You know, I agree with Joe because of where it is. And like Nathan says, you know, who, who are you going to get in? But can anyone say hand on heart that they've seen that news and gone, wow, that's really surprised me? Because mm. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone can. No, nah, but there we go. Right, Damien, obviously we were talking earlier about whether someone would come in quickly. Damien uh, said they haven't got anyone quick or else they would not have uh, appointed an interim uh, you know, as uh, as I think Joe, I think it was said earlier as well. But Damien popping up has just reminded me that perhaps we should have a, a quick advert break. We'll be back in one minute's time. Thinking about a new kitchen or bathroom? Find professional, independent local installers with free home surveys, itemised quotes and protected payments, trading standards approved contracts and workmanship warranties. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom, Bathroom Installations accredits installers to ensure they are police checked fully insured and experienced take the risk out of home improvement visit bikbbi.org.uk hello fellow addicts i'm so excited to tell you all about our micropub the river owl house the river owl house is based in east greenwich it has six pub of the year awards an ever-changing selection of amazing beer it's owned by chomp fans walkable to the ground in just 20 minutes with buses that go direct to the valley too If your match day routine includes a drink with your friends, you must join your fellow addicts in the river. See you soon. Right, welcome back to Charlton Live. This is our emergency broadcast. uh, And if you're watching this, you won't have missed the news. Uh, Earlier on this evening that the addicts boss, Dean Holden, uh, has been let go, uh, along with his assistant, Danny Sender, and the goalkeeper coach, uh, Glyn Schimmel. Um, We've just had a brilliant comment in the the chat. uh, Bob by the water says, I'd love to see Scott Parker come in and then Terry have to interview him after games. Uh, anyone who knows uh, Terry's views on Scott Parker will, uh, would, would, would very much like to see that. That would be very funny. Um, Naif, what happens now then? Are we, are we a club in crisis? You know, I, it's a, a little in joke I have with a few people that I always pick a, a club in crisis in London and tell everyone who it is. Uh, and and I picked at the very, very start of the season, Palace, because I think their goalkeeper moaned about something on Twitter briefly. Um, but it's us, isn't it? It's, it might maybe QPR, but it's us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Back to normal, back to reality. Back to those negative pos- podcasts we're going to have. Lovely, brilliant. Can't wait. Buzzing. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's just a shambles, man. As I said earlier, it's just a shambles, really. Um, I just don't know... I just, I just can't see as that all, all the boys have said it already in terms of, you know, what players are going to come in. But I'll tell you one thing though, ain't it a great smoke screen if we don't sign anyone by Friday though? Great smoke screen, that isn't it? Just putting it out there. Um, hopefully we do, obviously, because I want us to do well. But it wouldn't surprise me if we don't now. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I've done, crisis. I don't know. I didn't think we was in a crisis. We were in a bit bad run of form. Don't get me wrong, and we couldn't defend for Toffee. But that, I just don't. Whoever comes in. I hope he sorts the defence out and he don't lose five on a bounce. Otherwise, we're going to have another re we have another rejig on the, the old manager front, won't we? I suppose. Yeah. The way we're going. Oh well, no! Yeah. I will ask get you as well. Next, actually, since you, yeah, since you're the one speaking yeah, on, now, how much how, how much of the blame do the players take for this start of the season as well? Because I mean, no. I, I, I stick I stick my takeaways up on the on the South London Press website today, and I, I spoke about like say tactical issues and, and game management issues, but. How many of our players have made mistakes this season? You know, and and it goes back to last season and and probably the season before, probably more so at the back, but obviously a little bit in midfield. And, you know, we've we've had strikers over the years that haven't exactly filled us with confidence. But do do we give the players enough, I don't know, pressure for the amount of times they go wrong? I mean, we certainly did last season because we got some back, but... What what? How much of the blame do they take for the fact that as a club we we continue to to flail around in League One, or is it that it's not their fault? They're just the players we sign because they're the level that we're at. No, I think you've you've got to be fair and equitable and have a bit of both. I think Olden's been at fault for a lot of decisions. I think maybe yesterday it was a bit of a desperation um, sort of move, and obviously it didn't work. Hence the subs. But I think you've you know I don't I don't think. Holden would come out and say he's, you know, he's had a great time. I think he's done everything in his power to try and get results, and it's not come off. But you've got, to, you've got, to, you've you've got a point at the players as well. I know, like I said, Holden ain't been covered himself in glory in certain situations, but you can't. He can't. 
that stuff with Hector, that, that, that home game, I know you can coach it. You can't, when they cross that white line, you can't make them do it. You know, what, what does it, what, 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 unless he plays, he can't control silly decisions and silly mistakes. You can try and coach them, concentration. You can try and do all the shape. You can do everything you want. You can spend 12 hours a day, five days a week. If you go out in the first minute and then concede a sloppy goal, like through a silly mistake, what, what, what do you want him to do? Listen, I'm I'm not back in holding here. I'm just saying we're saying about players. Of course, they've got to take responsibility. But at the same time, us as fans, what we're trying to do at the same time is try and be positive, try and get behind them and not make it a toxic atmosphere. But at the same time, when players are doing that, what do you, what do you really want us to do? So they've got to take an element of responsibility, one million percent. It's not all down on Holden. And it's not all down to the players. It's a collective. Hence why some of them have gone. But I just, that's what I, I'm just I'm just saying by the end of this week, mate. What is what is the big change? We, unless something miraculous happens, and I listen, I pray to God it does. We get an un, unreal manager, get all these brilliant signings in. We start shooting up the table. I'd love to see it like every other per, every other fan. But I just can't. And now the, the question you said earlier about crisis. I think I, in my opinion, I think we're more in a crisis now than we were yesterday, because I just think we're so like near to the end of the window I just I just think it's mental mate honestly mm. uh, Mark uh, in the chat is saying it's hard to blame six or seven youth team players and yeah it is, it's, it's senior players I'm referring to rather than rather than the youth players you know who who again as we've spoken about quite a few times on the pod um, Lewis uh, have uh, you know arguably been been playing more than, than they ought to you know we've seen that with Deji Alerawe, yes, they had a very difficult first half, but you know, this is I, I was hoping this season he might get a League Two National League loan again and build on what he did at Bromley last year. You know, Ness did really well for us last season in the second half, but don't forget he was on loan at bottom under the table National League tour key before he came back. You know, that's a massive step up. He took it, he took it quite well, but it doesn't often go you know, extend for for a few months for youth team players when they're thrown in, into the into the limelight immediately. Um, we're we're going to wrap things up soon. We, we should talk about, we, we've spoken about Dean Holden, the manager. Let's talk a little bit about Dean Holden, the person. Um, you know, uh, he, he tried his best to come in and understand the club. You know, not everyone was a fan of everything he did, whether it be the, the celebration after the Leighton Orient game in front of the covered end, whether it be going into the pub, which, you know, some probably saw as a bit transparent, but he did throw himself into the area and trying to understand fans. Uh, he, he'd speak on every fan show. He was the only Charlton manager we've had on live on the Charlton live for a long time. You know, he, he tried his best um, and it, ultimately it's not been enough, but, but hopefully he goes, he goes with best wishes from the fan base. And, and obviously I wish that, that he um, has a successful career elsewhere. A hundred percent. You know, I think he he came in and he invested himself in in what Charlton was all about. Um, came in as a bit of an outsider from you know not being from around the area or anything like that. But he came in and, and really took to the club for what it was. I was very lucky that I got to sort of spend a bit of time with him um, doing the fan advisor role and stuff. I got to spend a bit of time with Dean, um, and he yeah, I mean he's a really really great genuine guy, and it's a it's a massive shame that it's not worked out here. Um, because I think you know if the positivity that he that he brings around the place. If you if you can transfer that onto the pitch as well, then we'd have been we'd have been living the dream. But sadly, it's just um, it's it's not gone that way. And as you say, a, a very very a nice guy who's going to be missed by by lots of lots of fans and and lots of different supporter groups that he he took a lot of time out of his, out of his personal data to, to spend time with and get to know. So yeah, you know, wish him. Wish him all the very best in whatever he does next because he's a really good guy. Excellent stuff. Right. I think we're going to leave it there. Um, emergency broadcasting this evening. The news coming out of SC7 that the Addicts boss, Dean Holden, uh, has been sacked just at uh, five league games uh, into the new season. What comes next? Well, nobody knows at this uh, point in time. Right. Thanks for everyone who's joined us uh, in the live stream. Uh, if you're caught up late or uh, or, or want to listen again, uh, we'll, we'll put this out as a podcast. It should be out in the next half an hour or so. Uh, so be on all the usual channels as well as being available to rewatch here uh, on the Cholton Live uh, YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Um, we'll be back on Thursday with the big match preview, looking ahead to the home game against Fleetwood. Lord knows what sort of news we'll have to talk about at that point uh, as well. But like I say, massive thanks to everyone who jumped on straight away this evening. Sorry we couldn't get to all the chat because there was at least 2,000 messages in there, which I was never going to get to all of them. But yeah, really pleased that so many people uh, joined us uh, this evening. Uh, chaps, um, just all shout at once, but thank, thank you and, and goodbye. Cheers, Lou. Goodbye. <laughs> there we go. Right. I'm Louis Mendes. Uh, thanks very much for listening to this emergency broadcast from Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, a bedroom and bathroom installation. We'll be back on Thursday. Uh, we shall see you then. <laughs>